One of the problems with computer graphics is that oftentimes they look way too perfect. And in the real world, especially in nature, things never look perfect. We're always looking at bumps and scratches and dirt and God knows what. So the question becomes, how can we make things more random? Uh, especially since in a computer, nothing really is random, right? So what we could do is like go out and take a picture and use that as an input to create something that looks more natural. But another way is to use math to make something that if you tweak the values just right, looks random, even though it really isn't. So let's try to do that. Uh, so what we have here is shader toy. If you never worked with shader toy before check out my tutorial on how to get started with that otherwise let's start making something random so first thing I'm gonna do is make a black screen so vec 3 and then I'm just gonna put 0 for everything to make a black and now let's make a a one-dimensional random value. So we're going to make a function that we, we throw a number into it and we get a random number back and that is between 0 and 1. So for that what I could do is I can I could stick my number and for my number I'm just going to use my UV coordinate right now. So I'm going to, I can stick my number onto a sine wave so now it will fall somewhere on a sine wave and in order for for that to be uh, a bit more interesting. I'm just going to multiply by a large number. So now it will fall somewhere on the sine wave that goes on forever in, in that direction and in the other direction. And a sine wave goes from plus one to minus one. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to multiply that by some large number. So now it goes from really high to really low. And now last but not least, I'm going to take the fractional component of the output of that. So, um, I'm just going to take everything that's after the decimal point. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep that. And so let's see what that does if we visualize that. Not capital C, but a small c. And that gives us this nice looking uh, barcode over here, where for every column of pixels, the, pi the pixel color is completely different uh, between black and white. So that's great. But we want something that is two-dimensional, not one-dimensional. So it has to be a function of both the uv.x and the uv.y. And for the uv.y, if I would multiply that by the same number or something that is in the same ballpark, then you would see a certain pattern here. So you want to take another number that is in a different ballpark okay, uh, in order to get something that looks more random. And so this is pretty good. Let me Let's look at that. Yeah, so that looks pretty random to me. Um, uh, you might have to play with these numbers to, to, to get something if for you that doesn't look random enough. Uh, different graphics cards have different, slightly different uh, ways to deal with this, so you, you would get a different result. So sometimes you have to play with this a little bit. So this is great. So let's put this in its own function. So I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make a function call it float or it's going to return a float rather. I'm going to call it <coughs> n for noise and it's going to take two values as an input and one value as an output. That's why it's n21 and uh, it's going to take a vector 2 as an input and then as an output I'm going to return this thing and then instead of uv over here I'm going to have to say p p and then return that. And so now over here, I can just say C equals N21, 2, 1, 2, 1, and then my UV is an input, and that shouldn't change anything, and it doesn't. So that's great if you want to perhaps make a, an old school TV that's out of signal or something like that, then I guess you could use this. Uh, but for mountains and clouds, it's not really that useful yet. Um, so one naive thing to think would be, well, I can just zoom in on this. So what we could try is to zoom in on this, but you can see that you can't really zoom in on it. And if you zoom in far enough, then you'll find out that it wasn't really random at all, right? This is pseudo random after all. 
Uh, It's just a mathematical operation. So we can't do this, but we can do something else. So let let me um, overlay a grid on top of this. So for that, I'm just going to make a vector two. Uh, I'm going to call it LV for local UV coordinate, and that will make sense in a, in a minute. And that is the fractional value of my UV coordinates times 10, let's say. And then over here, let's just visualize that in the red and the green channel. So I'm going to do col.rg equals LV. And that shows me now... Um, a, a bunch of boxes. So basically I multiplied my UV by 10 and then I, I, and I put that in a fract function. So, so uh, I will get some sort of repeated pattern through that. So now I have little boxes um, and they will go from, from inside of that, the UV coordinate will go from zero to one, zero to one, uh, both in X and the Y direction. And what, what I want to do is I, for, for each of these grid cells, every pixel, I want to evaluate the, the blue noise function on the corners. Uh, and then once I've evaluated on all four corners, I, I'm going to use the position of the pixel inside of the box to interpolate between those values to get the final noise value. So. Uh, for that, I need one more thing, which is I need to know which grid cell I am in. And for that, I can just make a another vector 2. I call it ID because it will ID the grid cell that we're in. And it's going to take the floor of that same UV times 10. And fract and floor are, are kind of the... Um, not the inverse of each other, but they kind of belong together because fract just returns the fractional component and floor returns the integer component of a number. So if you had a number 1.53, then fract will return 0.53 and floor will return one. So we can also visualize this. So let's have a look at what the ID looks like. And the ID goes from one to two, three, four, five, six. That's why you don't see anything over here. But if we multiply this by some smaller value, now you can see that inside of each box, that value is the same. And then when you get to the next box, the value is different. So we can use this to um, to get our noise values. So now what we want to do is we want to get our noise values for each of the corners of, of a box, for the bottom left, bottom right, top left, and top right. And so for that, I'm going to make a float, call it bottom left, BL, and now I'm going to evaluate my noise function at that location, right? And the bottom left location is the ID location, and the bottom right location is the, uh, what am I doing? The ID plus, so if this is my cell I'm looking at, and this is ID, then this is ID plus one in the X direction. Right, so I'm going to do a plus a vector 2, 1, and 0 in the y direction. So 1 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction. And then I'm going, to, um, I'm, I'm going to mix those two values together based on where I am inside of, the, inside of the, the box. And for that, I can just use my local UV coordinate, right? So if I just go back here for a second. Um, okay, I've got to get rid of this. And you can see that this LV goes from zero to one inside of the inside of each grid cell. So I can just use that. So over here, I'm going to go and I'm going to mix my bottom left with my bottom right based on the X component of the local UV coordinate. All right. And now if I just visualize that for a second, now you see that we have stuff that from left to right, at least, it, it, it interpolates properly. So now let's do the same thing for the top row, for the top left and the top uh, right. So go over here, top left, top right, top. And then over here, it's top left, top right. And then for the top left, if this was the bottom left, then the top left is ID plus vec two zero comma one. And uh, top right is the, t- the bottom left plus one and one. Okay, so I could also visualize that, although it will look similar. 
just shift it over one grid row. And now, last but not least, we have to uh, we have to interpolate between the top and the bottom, right? So we're going to do mix, bottom, and top. And then for that, I'm going to use the Y component of my local UV coordinate. Okay, and now if I look at this, I have redefinition because I get rid of this thing over here. Okay, so now I have an interpolated uh, uh, noise field. And that's already a lot better than we have what, what we had before. Um, there are some issues with this though, like one, the most obvious one is that we can see edges and crosses here. And that is because imagine that if my bottom left value, uh, noise value is over here, my, bo my, uh, my bottom right noise value is over here. So my noise gradient is going linear like this. And if in the next, in the next grid cell it's going linear like this, like now I, I end up with this sharp point at the top, which we don't want. We want something that's round. And, and the reason why it's linear is because my LV value goes linearly from zero to one. So we don't want that. We, we want to round it off. So what we can use for that is we can use a smooth step function for that. It's the all powerful smooth step function that is used so often that will turn that straight line into a nice S curve. So let's see what that does. And you see that makes the noise a lot better. And, um, while this works, the smooth step function does a few other things that we don't need in this case. So let's make our own smooth step. So I just go take this away. And here I can say LV equals, um, off the top of my head, LV times LV times, and now it's three minus two times LV. So this is also a smooth step. Uh, you see, it doesn't change anything. If you want to derive this yourself or you want to know how this works, check out my video on interpolation for dummies. I explain that there uh, in great detail. But other than that, let's just take this, this stuff that we made and put that in its own function. So I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say float smooth, uh, smooth noise. Noise. And it's going to take a UV as an input and it's going to give us as an output that nice smooth noise that we just made. So over here, I'm going to return that value and then I'm just going to take this, this times 10 out here uh, because we could do that out here if we needed to. So I can go over here now and I can go say float C equals smooth noise UV times four, let's say, got rid of the capital over there. And that works. So now that we have that smooth noise, what we can do is we can layer a bunch of smooth noises on top of each other to make a more interesting looking noise. So let's do that. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to add to my original noise value. And then each time I'm going to add a layer, I'm going to double the frequency of the noise. So I'm going to multiply the UV by a number twice as large, and I'm going to half the amplitude. Okay. And then obviously now I have to normalize my value because now my, my value could be one and a half, right? So I have to divide by one and a half over here. Otherwise I go past one or I could go past one. So you see that makes a more interesting looking noise. And so uh, this is called, I call it a layer of noise. Oftentimes they call it an octave of noise. So let's add a few more octaves to get an even more interesting looking one. So again, each time I'm going to double the frequency and I'm going to half the amplitude. Uh, and then I'm lazy to calculate exactly what that comes to. So I'm just going to divide by two. And you see that that gives a much more interesting look that we could use to make clouds or waves or mountains or what have you. So let's end this video by putting this in its own video, uh, in its own function rather. Also its own video probably later on, but for now, uh, there we go, vec2 UV 
and stick this whole thing in there and return C divided by two. And then over here, I'm going to say float C equals smooth noise to UV. And then let's make it that it moves a little bit so we can see it a bit better times 0.1. Say like that, and then obviously I have to press play, otherwise it doesn't work. There you have it, a um, a noise function that you can use as a building block to make many cool effects, uh, and not not just clouds and mountains. There's many other things we can make with this. I'm sure we'll come up with something later. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did find this useful, well, please like and maybe even subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Either way, I will see you next time.